ready to set our sails again. After moving back to our boat from Australia, as you can imagine, a lot needs to be done before we can actually leave port. Uh, oh, right side of the road. Especially seeing as we'll be going to some remote locations where everything is much harder to do. What a disaster. So join us in Charleston, South Carolina, as we unpack our whole life that's currently in boxes. And we sail non-stop for the next six or seven months in the Bahamas, before moving over to Vietnam to jump on our new trimaran. Exciting times ahead. Make sure you've subscribed so you don't miss the journey. Of the inlet, but if you draw a line from SDA buoy to the great cross there, so that's one of the things with having extra crew on board is we can check in advance and plan for contingency. So that's what I've got David doing now. And because it's hurricane season as well. So we're calling ahead, calling a bunch of different places and just not leaving any stone unturned and just getting... Did you hit your chin? Before we set sail, David and I pulled out the new Code D to make sure that she was in perfect working order. This pin can actually come all the way out of its case, so I've got to be forceful but also careful. You did great. <laughs> That's the Code D that we busted once going from the Azores down to the Canaries with Elena, and then once with Andre and Jack crossing the Atlantic. How much sail tape have you got? <laughs> so Doyle Sails sent us a new Code D. We requested the big purple one again because it casts a beautiful hue over the boat, which I've grown to love. So yeah, thanks a lot to those guys. We really appreciate that. So Laura's a local here in Charleston, aren't you? Yeah. And she's taking me to the storage facility where Elena has said basically to just collect everything. And I was pleasantly surprised. You've been bagging this car out hard, saying, yeah. like, apologising, <laughs> saying definitely don't bring the kids in here. And it's sick. I don't think that there's a way to strap them into a seatbelt. I can't think of a better car for them to be in. <laughs> Okay, so now I've transferred vehicles into a large truck, which is Laura's family's, and uh, there's part of a bow and arrow in the back here. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm gonna be driving on the wrong side of the road in a massive truck, which I don't normally, I mean, I haven't driven a truck like this since I was scaffolding out of Adelaide, but anyway. Little update on this. Uh, oh, right side of the road. Whoops. It's an automatic, not a manual, so that's good. Um, but the windscreen wipers don't go off unless you turn the car off. Um, so that could be problematic. Uh, so the windscreen wipers are now like this. And I'll be on the highway soon, and that's my major concern. Oh, here comes a. These are our 15 boxes that we put into storage, waiting to be sent to Vietnam to the new boat. 15 boxes that I was dreading reopening. I kept trying to convince Elena to just leave it all or set it on fire, I don't know, I didn't care, I just didn't want to deal with it. She did have a few good points about the utensils, life jackets and e -perp. I know it's a lot of shit, David, <laughs> but this is our entire life and we do have two kids now. David has the same thoughts that I do about having stuff on a boat. And I was just saying how, I was saying how I get anxious about it. And you do too, hey? Oh yeah, yeah. I hate it, it's, man. Yeah. The dredging here, from all the way over there, that's the dredger near that big, big ship. Where am 
my goodness. It's not very good, is it? That's a bit close. That better not touch our rudder. What are you doing? I'm holding this pipe off the side of the boat because we just got a new bottom job done. We've got beautiful new paint on the bottom of the boat. And this is covered in barnacles and heavy. Just sit up along the boat and scratch everything off. It'd be horrendous. I bet the marina doesn't even know. Yeah, no, I heard about it before, but usually it passes straight in the middle there, so it doesn't hit the boat. Mm. But now it's came back to the boat. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. No, it's it's not a lecture. I sense a lecture coming. On top of everything that we already know about trying to be minimalistic on the boat, when you box stuff up and then you put it somewhere, it just gets dusty and ruined anyway. So things like towels and sheets and, and stuff like that. No, I just don't like to be wasteful. No, I hate being wasteful. I don't like to be wasteful. But it's it's also like a lot of the stuff. It gets mouldy and otherwise we need to pack it in something way better than just cardboard well, boxes. I couldn't find a vacuum seal pack in Antigua and we didn't have time to order one online. I'm not, I'm not blaming you. No, I know. I'm, I'm just, just saying, saying. I'm just saying too. Well, I'm just saying. The I'm just saying too. Did you get rained on? Yeah, we got soaking wet. I asked a man with a cigar and an umbrella if I could have his umbrella. <laughs> He was like, lady with a baby. <laughs> you keep the cigar away from Darwin? Yeah, he held it out of the umbrella. <laughs> this is the squishiest box. <laughs> Surprisingly, we haven't lost anything to the rain yet, nothing seemed damaged, but my goodness, what a disaster. It's our last night here in the harbour and tomorrow we're heading out, setting sail for St Augustine, which is south of here. The hurricane that was off the coast here has dissipated, which is great news. It's still going to be, the weather's not going to be super flash, but yeah, we and, really want to. hurricane. Yeah, hurricanes are scary, aren't they? Yeah, hurricane is scary. Really looking forward to getting away tomorrow. It's going to be great. So the boys have gone for one last gym session here at the marina gym, and Laura's gone to drop off her car, which has been super helpful. I'm, and um, I'm you're hungry now, are you? Yeah. I've already made him dinner and he didn't eat it, so you can, no? Mum made you dinner and you didn't eat it. So Laura's gonna be with us for just this sail down to St. Augustine, and then we're gonna pick up Sarah, who's another lady from Canada. Oh, it's impossible to vlog now with children. It's impossible to vlog now because you interrupt me all the time. So as I was saying, we're going to have Laura just for the sail down to St. Augustine and then we have another girl joining us from Canada. Her name's Sarah. And um, yeah, she seems lovely. She's gonna be aboard for two or three months. And then we have another girl after that. So Lenny, we just wanna have a lot of fun with cool people this year. Good morning, everyone. We have a wonderful forecast today. The hurricane disturbances off the southeastern corner of the Bahamas have dissipated and we're champing at the bit. Excellent. Well, we'll head to the fuel dock when that guy pushes off then. Thank you very much. So what's the problem here, mate? So here it's a 24 hours um, fuel dock, but 
it happened that the yacht pulled over and slept there. So we asked if they can go ahead and waking up so we can get fuel, but so far nothing's happening and we gotta go. Good morning. Good morning. Just taking care of my infected earring this morning. <laughs> The only thing that I would point out is this thing in front of us here is sticking way out in front of our, our line. You need to get very far around it. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I'm gonna, um, that will be the last line to leave and I'm gonna pivot out and then when I say drop the line, drop the line, and I'll come out and go like that. All right, someone out there to catch our lines or not? Probably not. <laughs> yes, mate, we got a forward line on. All right. Good. <laughs> what? What are you doing with that? Oh, I just keep bossing around. <laughs> you gonna get that back line on? Yeah, if you can swing the back first, that would be awesome. Baby. So that was Rand, who runs the Marina Elena. Yeah, and he has yeah. a daughter. This is for you, Kate. We know you'll be watching. We did it. We actually got out of the marina in a timely fashion. Bring on the Bahamas for the next seven months or so. We feel like some of the luckiest people on earth right about now. So one thing we wanted to talk about, I was wondering if anyone else out there has a partner that hates stuff as much as Riley does. Like, even if I go to the supermarket to get essential items. Well, hang on. I'm not having I a go I live on either. a boat, so it's important, it's necessary for me to have a healthy dislike yes. of um, dysfunctional amounts of accoutrements. No, it is. But, like, he has it to the... I cracked myself up, so. The reason I'm mentioning... <laughs> the reason I'm mentioning this is because he was so grumpy that we had to go through all the boxes. No, it's because it rained. That we didn't even film any of the unboxing of the boxes. Because it rained. It's because it, it rained. It's because so, we... Which was my fault. We put stuff in cardboard boxes, which if it was going to Vietnam, it was actually going to be wrapped. Um, so it would have been fine, but we just left it in a storage shed in Charleston to get a bit damp and gross and... A little musty. Yeah, and we didn't check the weather and it rained for the whole when week. When you say we, you mean me. Whatever, we didn't check the weather. I'll take the blame for that too. And so we were unboxing these boxes when they were soaking wet. So yeah, anyway, that never got filmed. And so I feel like we should talk about it now and how funny it was. And I'm, yeah, I'm just wondering if anyone out there hates stuff as much as Riley. Because even if I go to the supermarket, you'll be like, what are you getting? I'll be like, lettuce, tomato, bread. <laughs> I'll be like, what are you really getting? I'm like, pro fruit pro cups. Protein bars, fruit cups. Like, Since we moved all of the stuff off the boat, which you said was everything on board was absolutely you necessary. Yeah, you agreed. No. And yes, then we you moved. Did. And then, hang on. I think that you think that I'm saying something that I'm not. Okay. Okay, so yeah. slow down. Okay, all right. Slow down. Mm -hmm. You little puff of fish. <laughs> Elena and I would say this thing to each other when someone's being defensive, we call them a puffer fish because you know how they go. Or a frill neck lizard. Oh, yeah, sorry, it's a frill neck. Frill neck. Yeah. yeah. When we were on this boat and we boxed everything up, so just yeah. before we boxed everything up, yeah. I would say to you occasionally, we should empty the boat yeah. and then drag back on only the necessary items. I would have loved to have done that. See, my memory of it was you said everything on board is absolutely necessary like we need everything that's on board now we couldn't possibly become more minimal than we are now and then 
when we took everything off and now we've put it back on again, we were you're able like, to wow, get rid of it so feels much like a, we've done a spring clean. Yep, yeah, so I think the reason why when we're in Antigua getting ready to pack up our boat and you were like, let's take everything off the boat and pack it up, I was, in my head, I was like, we do not have time to do this now. Like, let's just do it when we pack up the boxes. And by then we were running out of time to pack these boxes and... But the key just, point though, you I said... See. But that, that was there's... just to keep you quiet. That was just to like... Well, how to know, how to, you're like the, you're like the CDC and the FDA. Like, just tell me the truth. <laughs> you're misleading me for all the right reasons. Yeah, it was, yeah. I just didn't have, I didn't have a week to spare, you know. We were sailing in Antigua. How am I supposed to garner to trust do? in your institution? Anyway, the moral of this whole story, <laughs> Riley hates stuff. Does anyone have any coping mechanisms or techniques out there for him to deal with stuff? If it was up to him, we'd just have an empty boat. Um, you've come around, though. No, you've come around. <laughs> what a way to end the episode, just a live argument. Yeah, good. <laughs> I don't like stuff that much. These are the only toys that our children have. Do you want to see what our children... This is the only box of toys anywhere. This is the only box of toys for two children. What do you it's guys? Not true. He's got a bucket and a spade. He's at the beach. Okay, the he currently has a bucket and a spade. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mean that. Again, oh. passive aggressive. <laughs> it's just us arguing. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Have a good one. Well, this is just fabulous. There is it. What is this room? This is why we can't stay in nice places. Oh. Are you an Irish dancer? Are you? Yeah. Show me. <laughs> Do we have to go? Wow. <sighs>